that is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kaya, and today we are going to be doing a three song discography dive into the band Dimmu Borger. This is a Norwegian symphonic black metal band as far as Google says. Um, I know y'all have been wanting this reaction for a long time, so here we are. Before we get into the video, if you want to subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do so. We are almost at 8,000 subscribers, y'all. If we get to 10,000, we will start a Twitch and we'll hang, we'll play some video games, we'll do some metal reactions. It's gonna be super, super fun. So make sure you subscribe. Join the Discord, the Mosh Pit down below in my link is in the description. And also feel free to send stuff through the PO box if you want items to be featured in our new series, Metal Unboxing. Um, yeah, pretty much what we got. Um, a lot of exciting things are happening on the channel, so stay tuned, y'all. Also, do you like the new Cannibal Corpse tea? This is from one of our Metal Unboxings. Oh. So, super, super stoked. Thank you so much to, this, to the subscriber that sent this. Um, let's get into Dimmu Borger, shall we? Uh, there's horn and there's oh gosh I don't know I don't know there's horns and I'm feeling I'm feeling like theater music vibes it's symphonic metal so and after doing epica oh oh <laughs> sort of vocal thing that he's got that's like waving his voice in and out. This is very unique. It's giving me some Epica vibes. That's a very unique sound. Chorus up is so much different than the rest of the song. It's almost very. It feels very. Almost like a musical sort of uh, ballad that you would hear in some sort of 
Disney Pixar movie. Not in a bad way either, but you know it's got sort of that sort of sound and sort of setup. This chorus, they really opened it up and it's very, just, it's very singy. <laughs> and, uh... It, yeah, the little frills that they've got with like the flute and the trumpet and the choir. It's obviously it's metal, but then it's got, it's just, it's like a Disney Pixar princess movie, but like, but like metal. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I'm here for it. I'm, I'm not crazy about the epic reverb that he's got on his voice, I will say. It's so much. It's so much reverb to where it's like, it's a little money in the mix of this particular song. Now, it's, I feel like every song is different based on whatever channel is uploading music. So, this one's from their actual YouTube channel, so I don't know. It seems a little, like everything's got so much reverb that's a little money. But I'm liking like the elements that they're putting together. Tell me they do this live. drink some damn water hold a phone I got a niche it's not a scream it's like a voice the goblin voice that he's doing though ooh it's like giving me exorcist vibes and it's like really like this very forward and woo and it's like super flat and sandwiched in here and then you have all of these other elements that are making it super cinematic kind of giving me like Lorna Shore vibes in that sort of like cinematic way it's just like so like choirs and strings and as that voice is right there you've got the piano just like all these beautiful little frills kind of panning like this just filling up space while the choir takes up all of this that is beautifully mixed
seeing bees, dude? Dude, that scream he held out, though, was, like, kind of delicious. Kind of delicious. Just a little bit. Um, oh my. Gosh. Oh my. I don't really know what just happened. Um... I'm getting so many different things. Epica blew my mind, and Demi Borger is like, it's the same sort of vibe. Uh, definitely very cinematic. Uh, there's a lot of like theatrical elements to it. It's making me think of like, like I said, Disney princess, um, adventure stuff, um, event adventure movies like. I'm getting orchestrally, I'm getting like Harry Potter soundtracked, um, like a little bit kind of Game of Thrones, but they're not as medieval -y. they're more where, where Epica was more like medieval Game of Thrones sort of Viking style, I feel like Demi Borger is definitely way more theatrical, cinematic, um, musical-esque, um, huge sound. Oh, I really, really hope that they do this live, because that would be crazy. We are going to see one of their live performances, um, and I have high hopes, okay? No comments. Why? Uh, ugh, fine. Progenies of the Great Apocalypse. Let's go with the lyrics. Track two on Death Cult Armageddon. This album cover, though. Track two on Death Cult Armageddon. Served as Demi Borger's debut single on the album Death Cold Armageddon. The song features guest vocals by immortal frontman Abbott and features the pra Prague Philharmonic Orchestra. Wow. The album's Japanese edition also features a version with the orchestra only. Ooh. Parts of this song and another song, Eradication Instincts Defined, were used for Hellboy and Stardust trailers and was a theme song to the 2004 MTV series Battle for Ozfest. Yeah, definitely very, like, cinematic sound. Totally could hear it for a movie. Totally could see them being, like, hired to write music for, um... That, you know, movies like How to Tame Your Dragon and stuff, like old school Disney adventure movies, something that's a little bit more like rebellious. I could also see them doing things that isn't quite as like <laughs> dark as Game of Thrones, but something along the lines of that. Um, the music video features extravagant computer generated effects to correspond with the song's intensity and prestige. Ooh. That's the first time prestige has ever been used to define a metal band. The televised version is edited down from 5 minutes and 25 seconds to 3.35 and censors the female nudity. That's why I didn't watch the music video. Somebody said we shouldn't do that because of the nudity. Um, and I didn't want the video to get blocked immediately because of that. It aired frequently on Headbangers Ball and Uranium in the months following its debut. The song was performed together with the Norwegian Radio Orchestra and the Skola Cantorum Choir at the Oslo Spectrum on May 28, 2011 and was broadcast on Norwegian television. Dang. This is very cool. Kind of looks like a robot's eye or something from like, um, oh, Pacific Rim. Have you seen that movie? I actually really liked that movie. I love like Godzilla, Pacific Rim, and just big animal dogfights type movies. 
Frederick Nordstrom and Demu Borger from Nuclear Blast. Written by Mustis and Selenos. Cool. Very cool. What are we working with as far as like we who not deny the animal of our nature, we who yearn to preserve our liberation, we who face darkness in our hearts with a solemn fire. They know the darkness that is within themselves, but face it bravely and use it instead of being afraid of it. Oh, what are we talking about? Shagrath. The battle raged on and on, fueled by the venom of hatred for men, consistently without the eyes to see, by those who reveal and sewer quality. We, the prosperity of the future, seal, cloaked by the thunders of the north wind, born to capture the essence of the trails of our kind. They don't talk about, like, what this song is about, so if you have any idea what this song is about, please enlighten us because I would like to know. are working overtime this like verse that he has is was such a change they had this beautiful sort of like intro to it big old change I section which is just a beautiful uh great transition fatty breakdown slap in the face kind of open up the mosh pit sort of breakdown and then they open this part two with this like boom i don't know just like this kind of like low wheezy and a twang almost of this like bent string
funky funky those are like four very different chapters and I feel like honestly the transition into this fuzz this third section that we just ended super weird transition to sort of open up very different chorus similar to the first one um, I think it was Progenies is what it started out with so to that first song opens up to this chorus that's very different than the rest of the song. The transition, in my opinion, from this third section into whatever section we're about to go to for this closing piece, a little sloppy. And I, I hope that it's not sloppy live because it feels a little sloppy to change it to, in my own personal opinion, because it's almost like the tempo changes. Like, this one's very open, and it seems like they kind of leave it hanging and then for the drums to kind of stop and then get the groove back. Um, so that's just, I think, going to take practice. Obviously, they've got it by now, but it's like that's something like live. You do it easily in the studio, but live you have to practice that. I wonder if he like plays to a click or something like that to make that kind of... <laughs> Then they bring it forward here, and then the entire mix comes together. Oh my gosh, that was like, that was like an ice cream sandwich, and my head was like the vanilla ice cream. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's look at these lyrics. I'm curious to see what this song is about. I really liked this album cover, too. Yeah, with this, like, woman. I know... I think this is like somebody from like a tarot card or something. I, I don't really remember. Serpentine Offering. The video for Serpentine Offering was directed by Patrick Uleus. On the beginning of the music video, the following lines appear. What you believe to be true is false. What you thought right, wrong. The music video begins with Christian Crusaders raiding a the Lithuanian village and slaughtering innocent people. Here a priest's assistant is shown to dislike killing people just because of faith. When crusaders find a woman who had just given birth hiding in the barn and has set it a fire to incinerate her, the priest's assistant leaves to the forest where he pulls off and throws to the ground the Christian cross he was wearing, symbolizing his rejection of Christianity. Later, a group of Lithuanians are shown in a cave in the forest and later around a fire. In the end of the video, they attack and win the battle against the Christian crusaders. At the end of the music video, lines appear, the battle will never end in sorte diaboli, antichristus spiritualis. Hmm. The Heretic Hammer, The Sinister Awakening, Fundamental Alienation. So do they have concept albums or is it mostly just like songs that kind of kind of go together but aren't in any sort of like concept? Um, Frederick Nordstrom again helping Demu Borger. Galder, Shagrath. Very interesting. Should be. Part of a yawn. 
Reconcile not with the fear of the snake, but embrace it as your own. Inject its venom into your veins and replant the seed that gives growth, still shrouded in mystery, until you arise above perception. A veil of ignorance is in motion, continuing throughout generations. So it's unreviewed, but it says, Do not fear the snake as it sets you free, like an Adam and Eve when she listens to the snake and becomes aware of the concept of good and evil a match made in heaven paved the road to hell you might say but is still more free than being in the garden of eden and has limitations yeah wasn't it that the snake told eve to eat the apple i think that's right right christianity and the church are keeping us under control under the story of god and wants us to worship them and God for the purpose of having power and money. Finally, you realize that it is a lie and you gain higher power, higher awareness of the truth. My descent is the story of every man. I am hatred, darkness, and despair. I liked this. I am hatred, darkness, and despair. I like how he said that. Super good song. Yeah, they have a lot of like really good transitions in here. Like I said, that, that third transition into the final section seemed a little muddy you might disagree and that's okay it just seemed a little off to me so the next song we're going to get to is our final one and this one is going to be called gateways um and i was told to watch the live version so we're gonna do that spectrum are you ready for this symphonic metal after with the morning in the Wow, they have a huge face. Yes, the lot gateways. Whoa. Look at that outfit. Oh my gosh. Ingen the thing is insane. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Because, like, unlike, I feel like, a typical metal show where you're, like, moshing and thrashing and stuff, this is, like, an experience. This is, like, I'm going to see both an opera, a play, like, a musical, and a metal show. Like, oh, my gosh. And I love, I, 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 I love it. I wonder if they have, like, all of these elements for every show or if some of it's pre-recorded, like the choir and the the strings and maybe some flutes and stuff like that. Is that like all pre-recorded or do they have the live thing every time? Um, because I know some of y'all said Epica didn't have that for every show because uh, they can get expensive to have a full choir and a full orchestra and the whole shebang. Um, not to mention that's 
so much stuff to take across country <laughs> for a tour. But I also really, really love this lead singer's outfit. He's playing the part so well. That jacket is dope. I bet he's sweating his butt off with the fur and like the fringe. And then he's got these thigh high boots like, and the fog like, oh. You ever seen it? That bald dude that's like the evil dude? Kind of looks like one of their guitarists. Meets like Vikings. <laughs> and like some characters from like Game of Thrones that are very witchy and evil. Like kind of like um, the Faceless Man temple or whatever. Temple of the whatever gods. Or I don't know. It's giving me those types of vibes. Their costumes are amazing. <laughs> space and then they have the male to female callback be the breaker or the taker and then she's like be the giver or the undertaker I love that they added a female vocalist to this I don't know if she's like a normal member to it um, or if she's um, just here for one show but I love that they added her and for this section it's nice because he sings his part she does you know they do this callback and then they repeat it and then this section ooh. They give the drums just like a little bit of oomph. 
Oh, and layered under her beautiful, like, screamy belt. It's just like... It was either a small voice crack or like just a little patch of strain there because on that last line, what's she singing? It's Realize you are your own soul creator. And she's, she, it's really high up there and I ain't warned up girl, but she's like, she's belting that, belting, belting, and giving it so much room for it to really, really grow. Like, ooh, I love the way she sings Realize. Realize! I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This has got to be the single cleanest live performance I've seen for any metal band. Ooh. What do people have to say about that? I give you Nightwish. Everybody wants Nightwish. I suspect there was Vulcan backing tracks involved for both of them. Oh, spill the tea. This is a lot better than the video music version. I mean, it's an experience regardless. The drummer is in underrated position. He has to not only keep the band in time, he has to follow the orchestra, keeping all of them in time. Yeah. And I really liked the stage setup too. Huge stage, okay? I don't know if this is normal, but that is huge, huge. Like, you're talking, like, just this for them, and then two side platforms for an orchestra over here and a choir in black cloaks over here. Like, that's... Mm. Black metal orchestra monks choir lyrics. This is more spiritual than most of the YouTube spiritual gurus. Yeah, symphonic and metal at the perfect match. What strikes me most about black metal is the very classical strings that are used. Many people don't understand the heritage. It's beautiful. Oh. I would hardly call Demi Borger black metal anymore. Oh. What's the T? I just feel like that would be such an amazing experience to go to. <laughs> Honestly. Um... And just like Epica, it seems like it would be extremely enjoyable to go to. Like, something that you could take your mom to if she was sort of into, if she was a cool mom, you know? You could bring your parents to it, um, because it's, it's just enough, like, symphonic, theatrical, cinematic sort of stuff that it's not like going to a dying fetus. Like, you wouldn't, I don't know if you would take your mama to a dying fetus concert, okay? <laughs> Uh, but you might take her to Epica or Demu Borger, you know, if it's, if it's the right sort of vibe. Um, uh, this is an unreviewed bio. Ugh. Do I want to read all of this? It's not reviewed. 14 people liked it. Okay, we'll read it. As many know, Damon Borger often weaves spiritual meanings into their lyrics, often referencing satanic or other pagan practices. In spiritual systems, another word for chakras are gateways. Okay, or gates. The general belief is that when an individual opens their chakras, it allows a potent sort of spiritual energy to flow and radiate through a person, often called the kundalini slash snake energy. This spiritual energy is often associated with mystical, supernatural, or in general, hyper-elevated cognitive abilities. Additional, additionally, many people believed that ancient people had a greater understanding and knowledge of this energy than we do today. 
This energetic potential exists within everyone and upon awakening it, great possibilities can be had. An individual's mind becomes free. They gain elevated cognitive abilities among other things. Um, this symbolize, symbolism can be seen in almost every line of the song. References to gifts or abilities from opening these gateways. Mentions of rules and restraints no longer being valid. A symbolism of power and liberation that an, that an individual can unlock. Comments relating to how none of this knowledge is truly lost, but people in modern society are blind to it. So the gifts stay submerged and untouched within most. When these lyrics are put into the context of pagan religions, witchcraft, meditation, chakras, gateways, and modern pagan ideas, these lyrics can be interpreted literally and make perfect sense. Damon Borger is notorious for referencing the aforementioned topics in their music is arguably what their entire identity is based on. Interesting. Ooh, this album cover though is pretty fire. All right. The malpractice of the spirit ends. Gateways. When the gift is once again attained. Gateways. What is it? Referencing the many twisted spiritual and religious symptoms today that are perverting the innate spiritual potential that all humans possess. Dang. No rules or restraints are longer valid. Gateways, when the ancient future is reclaimed. Gateways, it's all there for the eyes that can see. The blind ones will always suffer in secrecy, for it is the omen of what lies submerged, breeding untouched within us, bleeding. Lost spiritual understandings. Dang, that's a deep song. I was just super, super impressed with, um, I don't know, just the live sound. <laughs> I'm an instrumentation kind of person, so I definitely really, really liked their live performance, their live show, um, all of the outfits, everything that they had, um, in terms of, like, you know, them having a choir and a full orchestra. Their outfits are really cool. It definitely seems a lot more more theatrical than Epica, I would say. Because they definitely played, especially like the girl and that one. Yeah, all of them. Because they had the makeup, you know, they had the face makeup. They had like the, the dress, the attire. Definitely looked like they were playing sort of like cosplay sort of thing. Or they were dressing up for like Game of Thrones. Not Game of Thrones, but like... Um, Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know. Definitely super into them. Um, sweet. So that's going to do it for our um, dive into Demon Borger today. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a comment down below and let me know what uh, what's your favorite song? What's your favorite record? Least favorite record? What's their like live show experience like? Do they always have a choir and an orchestra? Um, and what's up with the the woman? Is she like just a new asset? Does she only do it for like one show? I'd be very curious. Um, definitely interested to know more about Demi Borger because I really really like their sound. Um, so yeah, let me know down below. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do so. Y'all already know this. I post weekly videos and you can join our Discord. It's a very fun group of people. We have a blast there all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, I appreciate y'all spending time with me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, night wherever you are and whenever you are watching this, I will see you soon. Bye, you guys.